And this one is a cooperative dungeon diver campaign game that's been getting a lot of praise in the community with a really nice rating on BGG as well as a ton of positive reviews. And I personally think that this one does an incredible job delivering the experience that it's trying to deliver. And for that reason, this one is my own personal pick of the week. But I do want to mention that this one does deliver a very particular type of experience that's very similar to that of a role-playing game. So if you are a fan of RPGs, you might really like this game. But if you're not a fan of RPGs, you might still like this game. But just keep in mind that this one does require you to keep track of different stats. And there is a little bit of bookkeeping. But at the start of the game, each player is going to be building up their own character by combining different classes and races. And this is going to give you different benefits and limitations. But it's also going to set up your starting stats gear and your action points. Players will be able to upgrade their characters, skills, and gear throughout the game through finding new items and opportunities, but then also by gaining experience points which you'll be able to spend for various upgrades. But like I said, this one is a campaign game and you're going to be traveling around on a main map, traveling to different towns, settlements, and discovering different dungeons along the way. But when you're at these different locations, there's going to be all sorts of opportunities to pick up different quests, and these will usually require you to jump into dangerous dungeons. And one of my favorite aspects of this game is the way that the dungeons work, because rather than the scenario booklet just instructing you how to set up a particular dungeon and what's going to be in there, you're actually going to be curating a specific deck by adding certain cards together to create that dungeon deck, and then you're going to be starting on a starting tile, and then any doors on a tile, you're actually going to be splitting that deck up, putting part of it at each of the doors. Anytime that a character moves into one of those doors, you're going to be revealing the top card of that deck, finding the appropriate tile, attaching it to that door, and then splitting the remainder of that deck up for any doors that are on that tile. This is a really great design to introduce variety and randomness into each of these dungeons while still creating a dungeon of a certain difficulty and feel since you are curating the deck according to that dungeon. You're just randomizing some of the cards and the way that they come out. These cards aren't only used to generate the rooms and corridors within the dungeon because each of these cards will also let you know if there's any special items or monsters that are going to be spawning within that room. You're just going to be adding them as you draw the cards. But this is where another layer of variability comes into play because you're also going to be drawing the monsters from a monster deck. And there are a ton of different monsters and items that you can discover in this game so it's always going to be exciting to see what turns up. The players aren't in these dungeons just to fight monsters and find gear, although those are some of the perks, because players are trying to fulfill certain objectives for each of these individual dungeons. You're going to be searching the rooms trying to find the proper rooms to fulfill those objectives and to accomplish the tasks that the objectives want you to accomplish. Players will have to be careful as they're navigating through the rooms because some of the rooms can trigger different events and there can also be traps to discover as well. Whether you discover those through a keen eye of observation or blindly stumbling into them is entirely up to you and your character and the stats that you decided to invest in. Players are going to be rolling the 10-sided scenario die at the start of their turn and there's a bunch of different outcomes that can happen here, but it could depend on the dungeon you're in, the monsters that are currently revealed, or even any effects or status effects on your character. But if you do roll a 9 or a 10, that's going to trigger the roll of the threat die. And threat is something that I haven't talked about yet, but it's something that's going to be increasing throughout the game through different battles or through different consequences of actions that players take. But anytime that you roll the threat die, if you roll a value that's lower than your total threat, that's going to cause some negative effects for the party, but it usually does then reset your threat by some amount. Players are going to be spending their action points to perform different actions like moving around on the board, attacking different characters, or performing any other special actions. Most of these actions do involve some sort of skill check or dice rolling, although it's not always the case. The dice you get to roll when you attack will depend on the type of attack you're performing as well as any gear or special actions that you might have. It's also important to note that when you are in combat the way that you face does matter so you don't want to end up with your back to the enemy because that's going to make you more vulnerable but of course if you can sneak up on your enemies that does give you an advantage. As you'd expect, a player can spend their action points on whatever combination of actions that they want to perform, but a really cool thing here is that you can actually combine action points together if you want to perform things like a power attack. When you attack, you're going to be rolling your various dice trying to meet a skill check, and then if you do meet that, you're going to be dealing out the amount of damage, which could be a set amount or also determined by a separate dice roll. But the enemies aren't just going to stand there and let you attack them, and this is another aspect of the game that I really, really love, and this is the way that the characters activate, because once you do have enemies out on the board, 
Every character is going to be putting their chip into a bag. This includes the player's characters as well as the enemies. Some characters could actually put multiple chips into the bag if they are really quick or have a keen sense of observation, which does increase the chance of their chips being drawn potentially multiple times. The player is going to be drawing from this bag in order to determine which order the various characters activate, so the players aren't going to get their turn while the enemies just wait. Instead, any character could be activated at any time, creating a much more interesting environment that I think adds to the realism and immersion in quite a big way. Players are going to be continuing the game like this, exploring the map, discovering new dungeons, storylines, as well as learning more about their own individual characters. The new expansion is actually also coming with a second printing of the game that's going to be adding some corrections and streamlines to the rules. But the expansion is going to be adding even more variety to the game with new types of dungeons that you can discover, new enemies and characters, as well as new locations and quests to visit. I really like what I'm seeing with this one and I'm happy that they're continuing to iterate on it as well as add new content. So if you think this one looks like something that you might be interested in, I do have a link to the campaign in the description below. And of course, you can click that link to get notified.